Hi, today's video is about broccoli sprout benefits and the benefits of sulforaphane, which is the really important substance inside the broccoli sprouts. And it was requested by Patrick de Mateus. Patrick, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. If you're new, welcome. I'm called Adrian. I make videos about alternative, safe, natural, and effective ways to maintain and improve your mental and physical health and well being. And if you're not new, welcome back. It's really good to see you again. If you've not already subscribed and you're interested in this kind of content, please do click on the subscribe button below and the bell icon so YouTube can keep you updated as I release new content. And in the comments section, let me know if you've been using broccoli sprouts and how you get on. The structure of today's video is we're gonna talk about the cruciferous vegetables, and obviously broccoli is one of those. We're gonna talk about sulforaphane, which is the important substance, and I'm gonna tell you why you should be taking more of it every day. And we're gonna to touch on broccoli sprouts, and I'm gonna put a link at the end uh, that you can use to make your own broccoli sprouts. This subject is very new to me. I've already ordered my broccoli seeds, and once I've sprouted those, I'll be making a video about how you can sprout them. I understand it's really, really simple and takes three to five days. This video is gonna be a little technical in places, um, but do bear with me and if you want a lot more technical information There's a link in the description to an excellent video that goes on for about 47 or 48 minutes. That's really really Involved and it's uh, a video by a scientist and I found that absolutely fascinating So what are the cruciferous vegetables? Well, that's things like broccoli and obviously broccoli sprouts which are from broccoli seeds cauliflower collard greens bok choy wasabi who knew Brussels sprouts, watercress, and cabbage. Well, why should you be eating the cruciferous vegetables? Well, it's been known for thousands of years that they're extraordinarily good for overall health. And I remember seeing something a long time ago uh, where the Romans said if there was like a, a canker, which I presume they were referring to cancer, that application of cabbage leaves would put that straight away right, or put that right straight away. Um, the critical for health, if you look at the highest consumers of uh, the raw vegetables, they have, I read, a 22% reduction in all-cause mortality. And as an example, in one of the reports I read about men, there was up to a 50% reduction in mortality by bladder and prostate cancer in men that ate four or five servings a week of cruciferous vegetables. The important compound in the cruciferous vegetables are the isothiocyanates, which are formed from glucosinates through an enzyme called myrosinase, which actually sounds a bit like mayonnaise. And the myrosinase is activated by crewing, crewing, by chewing, chopping, and crushing. Uh, it's also inactivated by sustained heat, so boiling would cause a problem there. And of the isothiocyanates, sulforaphane is the most potent one, and it certainly had the largest volume of scientific research and scrutiny applied to it. So what is sulforaphane? Well, it's a powerful activator of the NFR2 pathway, and that pathway affects the expression of over 200 genes, particularly uh, the antioxidants, and in fact, sulforaphane is one of the most potent antioxidants. It's also a very strong anti-inflammatory, and with all the research I've done, inflammation and oxidation are two very big causes of many diseases. Sulforaphane is also very good at inactivating harmful compounds, and the NQ01 gene uh, is involved in detoxification and the P53 protein, uh, which is involved in tumor suppression, the degradation of that is prevented by sulforaphane. And that's important because in cancer patients, in one of the documents I looked at, 50% of those cancer patients had damaged or mutated p53 protein and interestingly sulforaphane has been detected in breast tissue just one hour after ingesting uh, the sulforaphane food sulforaphane is also involved in phase 2 detoxification enzymes it helps lower dna damage through inflammation and oxidative damage it also greatly enhances the excretion of carcinogens which are cancer causing uh, substances things like benzene which is a very harmful carcinogen which comes from vehicle and ship exhaust and everything uh, and that increases the uh, excretion of benzene through the urine and the bile and also other carcinogenic substances sulforaphane has been shown to be a potent cancer preventer and a killer of cancer stem cells 
It's also very, very helpful uh, for preventing cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer, apparently, of people in America right now. It also has very potent benefits for the brain and in neurodegenerative diseases, uh, which are affected by uh, inflammation and oxidative stress. So things like autism, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and depression. And it's also been shown to have promising effects uh, in anti-aging because it prevents DNA damage uh, to the DNA adducts. And I'm afraid I don't know very much about that. Uh, it's also, sulforaphane is also a very good hormone balancer. And from some of the research I've seen, it looks like it could have uh, lifespan enhancing effects as well. Now, broccoli sprouts, they are from the broccoli seeds that are the sprouts that come off that. The reason you want to be eating those are they contain 100 times more sulforaphane than the mature broccoli. And you'd eat them raw, you'd put them on your food, you could probably juice them. Um, you could pinch handfuls off during the day and that's what I intend to do. You want to chew them well because it's that tearing and shredding and cutting action that works with the myrosinase. If you want to increase the sulforaphane quantity in mature broccoli, I've read there's two ways of doing that, or actually one way of doing that that I've read, and that's to apply some gentle heat. So steaming for three to four minutes seems to work, as does heating in water, but you have to control the temperature to no more than 60 degrees centigrade and apply heat for no more than 10 minutes. Now, as far as the quantities you should eat at this point, I really don't know. I would suggest that any quantity is better than no quantity. And from the research I've seen, the larger or the greater the quantity, the greater the beneficial effects are. So my intention is to eat possibly two cupfuls of the sprouts every day. Uh, on salads and also just have it as a snack during the course of the day. I understand it gives you a good energy boost when you snack on it that way as well. So where do you get the seeds? Well, you can buy them online. You can buy them on Amazon, eBay, other online resellers. From what I've read, you want to avoid broccoli rab, R-A-A-B seeds, because that's not the same as the broccoli sprouting seeds. Uh, and that nearly caught me out when I was ordering mine. So I'm gonna put a link below to the ones I've ordered and hopefully they'll be correct. And if not, obviously I'll change the link later on. I'd suggest you go out and get yourself some broccoli seeds and try sprouting them and let us know how you get on the comments section below. If you found this video useful, please share it on your social media platforms. If you think of someone that would benefit from watching it, please pass it along to them. If you like the video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below and the bell icon so you can be kept updated. And in the comments section as well, if there's any other videos you'd like me to do, please let me know and I'll look into that for you. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.